to see how I milk a goat? Okay. So I lured Nala here with the promise of food, which works every time. And Nala, unfortunately, likes to kick when she's being milked, but only her left leg. So I secure her left leg to this post, which I put screws in specifically for that purpose. And that's all she needs, just that kind of security to hold it there. Then we've got the bucket underneath. I've wiped down her udders so they're nice and neat. And then I come in from behind and just squeeze. This is what works best for me. You might wonder, why is she not squeezing the udders the same as you would a cow? And the answer is because look how small that teat is in my hand. I can't, like it fills up half my palm. I can't do the normal milking technique. So for me, this is just what works best. So I am currently in the milking pen of the goat's enclosure and I built this separate pen on the side of their shelter just so I had somewhere specifically to milk my goats. Um, that's not how I was doing it previously. I would open up the gate, lure the goat I wanted out with food whilst barricading the other animals away, put it on the ground, feed them whilst the dogs run around getting all excited and it was just a hot mess. And so I built this separate little pen. This is actually old um, wooden crates that I pulled apart. It's not an enclosure for them to sleep in or anything like that but it is a, a serviceable fence to keep the other animals out. We are all done milking Miss Nala. She gave us a good amount of milk. I'm about to go inside, pour it into my measuring cup, put it in the fridge straight away. Uh, you want to try and chill milk as fast as possible from goats. That helps get rid of that kind of goaty flavor, which I don't mind personally, but yeah, that's just a little tip that I learned on the internet. This is little Douglas. He joined our farm about a week ago. Look at that face. He is, oh, I'm going to say it wrong, chamois, which is the black legs, brown body, black stripe on the spine, chamois with excessive white on his sides and white pole, which means white spot on top of his head and blue eyes. Are you the sweetest boy? <laughs> oh my gosh. Look how tiny that face is. Are you the sweetest? Yes. Yeah, he's got his fluffy winter coat right now. All the goats do. Extra fluffy and shaggy right now. I want to say thank you, Nala, for letting me milk you and giving us some milk to make goat's cheese. <laughs> So happens 
that I've decided to revamp the chicken's roost where they sleep at night, the structs that they stand on in here. So I brought my tools out, just bringing some power out to Cluckingham, because unfortunately it doesn't have any. About to clean it out, put down some fresh straw, because right now, oof, that's what it looks like. Gross poop everywhere. But yeah, so this is their current stoop. They come in from outside, they go up, and there's only two bars for them to roost on. But now there's not enough rungs for all the chickens, so some of them have been sleeping down in the nesting boxes and pooping there at night where they lay their eggs. I don't like that. So I need an, a happy in-between. Yeah, Here is my dearest hubby and Monty Poo in the side by side as always. What are you working on today, Bob? Grass. Grass. So this is gravel from where the previous owner, they used to drive up and park their car here and they use the concrete pad as like a patio, I guess. So now Brad is hand shoveling out the gravel, carrying loads of dirt in on the side by side and streaking it out, putting down seed and straw and watering so that we will have grass come summer. <laughs> oh, bub. It will look good. It will look good. I just threw some scratch out to the chickens. They wouldn't be in my way whilst I'm working inside Cluckingham. And the sun on Russell Crow right here, look at that. What a handsome, shiny, iridescent, beautiful boy. side of the paddock where I feed the goats and pigs because that gets all muddy and the grass is tore up. He just put some seed down so this with the chicken poo in it is going to be amazing fertilizer. Okay so we're all clean in the chicken coop and the nesting boxes have fresh straw. Now I need to sweep dust off and also <laughs> sweep out the main part of the coop and then finish building the roost for the chicky babes. Hi Bernadette, how are you doing there sweets? <laughs> There's a baby to look after. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> Yay! Good job, baby. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> have to jump up to the first one but that's fine they can fly way higher than that because they fly off my fences it has more rungs than the previous one on a nice slant nicely spaced they're not crowding each other so yeah 
Time to milk Nala. I decided that I wasn't going to tie her back leg down this time because she was so well behaved last time and that was a mistake. She, of course, went ahead and stepped in the bucket and her hooves have gross poop, fecal matter and whatnot on them. So this milk was a throwaway, hence feeding it to the pigs and they love it. I know, Bessie. There's no more, baby. There's no more. I know. <laughs> Oh, sweetie pie. They love milk. Alright people, I am going to need all of your egg recipes that use a lot of eggs, like 12 or 14 eggs, because the egg situation inside, I'll show you a photo, is ridiculous. And this is just two days of eggs, right there. Thank you ladies, I'm very grateful, but my goodness, my boy's not big enough to eat all these. Jack, can you say bye-bye? Say bye-bye. Good boy.